Welcome in to another edition of the Creighton Basketball Newsletter. I'm John Niatawa with the World Herald here to break down some Creighton basketball news today. It's all about uh, the latest Blue Jay commitment, Arthur Kaluma, a six foot eight wing, a top 50 prospect. He'll actually go into the books as, as the highest rated Creighton recruit in the his, in the modern era, I guess, of recruiting rankings. You know, these online recruiting sites haven't been around forever so we can only go back so far but as far back as we can go there hasn't been a player rated higher who's committed to Creighton um Arthur Kaluma is that guy so his process his recruiting process reopened a month ago after he got out of his letter of intent former UNLV signee coaching change he decides to reopen his recruitment and next thing you know he's a Creighton Blue Jay so obviously an important addition for the Jays I mean he's a very versatile, I mean, kind of what you want, what you, what the Jays look for in their um, pursuit of potential talents at the three or the four position, that wing spot, because he can score inside. He's really strong and powerful, uh, can find different ways to beat you on the block. He can put the ball on the floor and create for himself, for others. Um, he's really clever with the dribble. Like it seems like he's got a lot of moves that he can go to to free himself um, and to get downhill on you. So, and he can shoot it too. So like you can't leave him open. So there's just, I mean, he's just got a wide range of skills or a reason, a good reason, a lot of good reasons uh, why he's ranked in the top 50 in the country, technically number 45 on the 24 um, seven composite rankings. Again, that's the highest that, that Creighton's ever had. And you add him into the mix with the rest of Creighton's 2021 recruiting class. And this class is, um, as good as any in recent history. Um, I mean, it's, it's the recruiting rankings kind of speak for themselves, right? Uh, the Jays are number seven, according to two, four, seven and number 12, according to rivals, that's number seven and number 12 nationally um, for this 2021 class. And obviously Kaluma is a big reason for that. Um, he, he boosted the, the Jays sort of collective class ranking, but other guys who are part of this class already, who've been a part of it for months now, um, are you know I feel like they're they're not they're definitely not overlooked among Creighton fans, but maybe nationally overlooked a little bit. I, I mean, a guy uh, Ryan Nemhard, the point guard who committed to Creighton last summer and, and signed with the Jays in November, he he moved up in the latest batch of updated rankings um, from just around the like top 100 range, all the way up to number 65 on the 24 seven, um, composite rankings, number 65, like he, if, if Kaluma hadn't committed, um, Ryan Nemhart would be the highest rated recruit in Creighton history in at least in, in Creighton modern history, the, the recent re recruiting era. So like, like Nemhard's legit. And I think that the recruiting experts and analysis like they, they started uh, analysts, they started sort of uh, really digging into his game a little bit this year. He didn't play AAU ball. He's a Canadian product or Canada product. And it didn't, who wasn't on the regular AAU scene over the summer. Not like you could see these guys in person a ton because of the pandemic, but I don't think he got the same sort of bump that maybe he normally would have last summer, but then he goes out and uh, helps Montverde Academy win a national championship and, kind of led the way as, as their lead dog there at the point guard spot and, and all of a sudden got, got some bumps. So um, really talented prospect, obviously um, Mason Miller joins this class as well. And uh, the son of Mike Miller, the NBA longtime NBA veteran Mason's a six, nine, kind of like Kaluma, man. Like he can put it on the floor and jump over you, jump by you um, or shoot a shot in your face and, and nail three pointers if you leave them open. Um, so, so he's got the ability to impact Creighton right away. And I'm really intrigued to see the game of John Christopoulos, the six, four shooter from Seattle. Like, you know, I, I feel like the floor is high for him because you know, he's going to bring that elite shooting, that marksmanship, but he's a player who he, he battled some injuries midway through his high school career. And, um, is just now kind of getting back and finding a flow and getting healthy again. And I, I mean, he was once a really highly rated prospect and then the injuries happened and kind of got dinged um, in, in, in terms of recruiting rankings, but uh, 
you know, obviously those don't always tell the whole story. So I'm just intrigued to see what kind of game he can bring to the Jays and what kind of impact he can have. So that's four guys right there uh, that make up that 2021 recruiting class that, that, you know, obviously has a lot of Creighton fans excited. And then you add Ryan Hawkins into the mix, the D2 transfer from Northwest Missouri State. Uh, you know, the, a winner, first and foremost, won two national championships uh, in Division Two. was one of the best players in the country at that level. Um, a dynamic sort of six, seven. I don't know, man. He's another guy that's got a lot of moves on the interior and can definitely knock. He shot 46% from three point range. He can knock down a shot if you leave him open. He's got that experience uh, t- that, that he can lean on. And uh, he's, he, he seems to be a really hungry and driven guy. So he'll be a valuable piece for the Jays. Um, it, it, and it's interesting too, with the addition of Hawkins and now the addition, uh, the addition of Kaluma all of a sudden you look at Creighton's roster and, and the Jays have some long guys on there, you know, like they're still probably maybe missing a, some depth at the five, like Ryan Kalkbrenner's coming back obviously. And, and he'll be the, the, the top option there, but behind him, it's like, well, are, are the Jays going to then maybe experiment, but with going a little bit smaller or can they still add another piece, another roster piece to fortify um, that center position and add some depth there because I mean, otherwise, even, even, you know, Brian Cockburn, how many minutes is he going to get it, uh, it, per game? I mean, you, you'd imagine he'd be on the floor a lot, um, which then suddenly you look at that three, four position for the Jays. And I mean, it's six, six Antoine Jones and six, six uh, Alex O'Connell, uh, six, eight Arthur Kaluma, six, nine Mason Miller, six, seven Ryan Hawkins, like, that, that, that those were the spots on the floor that Damian, Damian Jefferson at six five and Denzel Mahoney at six five. Well, Denzel has a has a six ten wingspan, so that helped him. But uh, suddenly, there's a little bit more length there at, at those at those positions, which I think will be valuable. Obviously, um, and this roster is going to have a, a lot of intrigue. So, how Greg McDermott and his coaching staff put the pieces together will be interesting and, and fun to follow this summer and into the, the into training camp. Um, but it does seem like the Jays still aren't done in terms of roster additions. So we'll continue to track that as uh, the off season unfolds. It's May, but then again, it's only May because there's transit. I, I, it's, it's funny. It's the, 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 the terminology that keeps floating in my head, it kind of feels like an NBA free agency transactions. That's the word I was about to say. It's like, but that's what it feels like that, that uh, players are moving and changing locations. And um, even a guy like Arthur Kaluma, I mean, it was, his decision was triggered by a coaching change, but all of a sudden um, one of the best, most highly regarded prospects um, had a spot secured in March and, and he knew exactly where he was going to go. And then in April he's available and, and considering changing course. So you never know what can happen in, in the college basketball off season. So we'll just keep following it and tracking it and seeing uh, uh, what happens with the Jays uh, and who they add, who they lose. We'll see. It's again, it's only May. So Appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for following our coverage. If you haven't subscribed to the Omaha basketball newsletter, do it really easy. Just omaha.com slash newsletters, click a little button, enter your email in there, and uh, you'll get these weekly alerts every Tuesday. So for now, appreciate you guys. We'll be back next week.